Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to walk you through migrating a monolith into microservices. So let's get into it. So first and foremost, we're going to cover a few things. What, what we're going to cover is basically what is a legacy system, what makes them hard to maintain, how can we migrate a legacy system, and when is it time to split a monolith. So first and foremost, legacy is a word that programmers use to describe code that is messy or not in line with the cur what is currently considered to be good practices. And in all honesty, some people just use the term legacy for, hey, this is code that I don't understand or this is code somebody else wrote. But sometimes the code can, like, it is not an uncommon thing for code to grow messy over time. And it actually is it can get really hard to maintain and even worse it might get to a point where you're actually slowing down your product productivity within your software team and it might actually impact users experience as well depending on performances and stuff of this nature and when you get to a point like this it you usually have just like a few options you can refactor the system, you can rewrite the system, or you can start a migration of some sort, or at least make a split. And if you have the option of refactoring, I mean, that's always probably going to be the best thing. If you find some place in the code that is fairly refact, like that, which you, which you think that you can refactor and actually improve things, that's something that you should do, and you should try to continuously do this. You know, the Boy Scout rule and all that good stuff. And rewriting, well, that works if the system is small, but I will say that in my experience, it is the so-called big rewrite is, it n almost never works. I would, I don't think it, like, it's almost, a, it's a mental mistake that a lot of people make, and especially beginners where you think that, all right, when you're reading through the code, you're seeing something that is ugly, something that you want to improve, and then you go, oh, I should rewrite all of this in a nice way. But remember that even if you rewrite, odds are that you will simply improve the thing that you are at that point in time just looking at. That thing that you are focusing on might be improved, but you remember you have an entire system around it and you are very likely to simply cause a lot of other problems and it's very unlikely that you will find a magical way to make all of the system and all of its complexity into something that is just objectively better, just nicer in general. And that's why the big rewrite really works. It's just a mental lie that people tell themselves in general uh, to justify improving something. So migrating is one of the methods that I've found to be the most viable solution and basically splitting out a big monolithic application into smaller services is kind of the way to go here. Now I will say for completeness sake it's important to note that a migration or splitting a monolith into multiple services shouldn't be something that you go for only because you have a lot of ugly code. Because although you might have a really big system with ugly code, I mean, that's that's kind of reality there, guys. You will never work in a system of any significance that doesn't have any ugly code. So that's just good to know in general. So unless you are at the point where the, the problem is so massive that you need this migration, or alternative, you, your code base has grown to such a size and the amount of people working on that code base has increased to the point where you're just getting in each other's way when you try to work. It's a very, you know, the problem with too many chefs, right? If you have too many people trying to fix the same things at the same time, you just kind of bump into each other. You have all these conflicts and stuff of this nature. So that's a very good general rule of thumb that if you're getting these sorts of problems, that's when you should think about a migration. But remember, having multiple services is not free. A monolith is by far the easiest thing that you can have from a maintenance perspective, which means that if you are splitting things out into multiple services, make sure that it is justified. Don't just do it because you feel like it. It has to weigh up the cost because there is going to be a cost from a maintenance perspective when you have multiple services. So how do we do this? Well, the way that we approach this sort of problem, or rather the way that I've found to be one of the most efficient, way, efficient ways to do this is through a proxy. So let's just walk through it. 
So I have this little Docker Compose file here with a bunch of services. So I have a user service, cars, books, and then I have my monolith here, and then I have an Nginx instance. Now, for those of you who may not know, that Nginx allows me to basically put a gateway application in front of my other applications. So I can pipe all the incoming traffic to my system through this gateway or through this reverse proxy in this scenario. And then I can direct calls as I see fit. So if we look at the monolith here, we, we I'm just this is just a toy example here, but here's my little server listening, and here's some very small like a few dependencies, and here's the Docker file for my monolithic application, super fancy, and this is my entire system. So this is as you know, this is just for demo purposes, but just imagine for the sake of argument that this was a really, really, really large system. And I have tons of people, we have tons of issues with productivity, and we've just found out found that we simply have too many people trying to manage this entire system at the same time, and people are getting in each other's way. Right, so how can we fix this? Well, as long as the system is calling, the user who is interacting with our system is calling this directly, it might get a little bit tricky, but due to nginx and being having the ability to put a proxy in front of our system we can actually make this a fairly easy transition so the goal here is to slice out what i call natural services so when we talk about microservices guys in this scenario it's a very si simple cut because we have three very natural slices we can make here so we have a user's service a books service and a car service this is a very nice slice to, for each of these services. However, try to remember that the goal is not to adhere necessarily to a set of very strict rules that define, but defined by some person on the internet. The best approach for you is to slice the service out into the slices that make sense for your system. So if I had other areas, let's say that cars here, I mean, if I have other endpoints or different logic, logic that I feel would make a very natural good fit for this service, I would bundle that together. Because the goal isn't, as I said, to be academically perfect when we're talking about microservices here. The, the semantics are not as important as efficiency. And it's actually much more efficient to think about creating the right size of services for your system rather than jumping to microservices immediately. But right now we have something that will fit this very well. So what we then do is that we create these other services. So here's my car service, which is just basically a subset of my mon monolithic application. So as you can see here, I'm using my versioning. This will be important in just a moment. You see that I'm using version one for these endpoints. And then I have version two for this endpoint. My books looks exactly the same. I'm not going to go through all of these because these are basically the same files. And then I have my users service here. And as you can see, they're basically just subsets of the main application. Now, when we're doing this, you don't have to do a like. You, there's no it's not it's not necessary for you to run these things in parallel, but you can, and that's what I want to illustrate to you. It's also feasible for you to simply make the slice, create a separate service, and then just remove all the old code from the monolith before you actually spin up the new services. But for demo purposes, I'm doing both now. So you can see that you can actually run an old version of your application logic together with a new version that is a basically just being catered to being sent from a separate service. So in Nginx, we have this little configuration. So what we're basically seeing here is that my Nginx instance is going to listen to port 8080. And whenever a user tries to access my version 2 endpoint of users, I'm going to forward that request to my user service. And the same thing goes for cars and books. However, any other request is going to go directly to the monolith. And what that lets me do is basically this. So when I refresh here, you see that I'm going to version 1 of my books API, but I can also switch over and say, hey, I want version 2. And now I'm actually hitting the service. So what's nice about this is the interface from the consumer's perspective is almost not changed. I mean, I would do. I don't have to change 
this version number here. The only reason I have is because, as as I mentioned, I'm running both the monolithic instance or and the service at the same time, just to kind of illustrate that you can actually iterate in an iterative manner migrate your entire monolithic application over to services. And when I feel that I'm good and ready to deprecate this stuff or rather remove the code here that I don't need anymore, I'll simply slice that out, throw it away and repoint my Nginx configuration. And now everything that has to do with books or cars or so or users is simply going to go to the corresponding service. So yeah, that is, uh, that's pretty much the entire idea there. So what I want you to take away from this is that when you have a monolithic application, that is very naturally the best starting position. But as your project grows, you will find that at some point you're going to have so much code, most likely, that it starts making sense to create smaller application applications, either services or microservices, something like that. And using this strategy for migrating over services, thanks to something like a proxy, is actually a very efficient way for you to go from a monolith over to a service-oriented oriented architecture. Have a great day.